Glory be to God, you welcome to the narrowest Christ for all nations. It is my prayer that God will use this word to bless us this hour. Please, if you're new to this channel, I encourage you to subscribe and I also encourage just a few who are watching to like and share this video so that it can reach out to more people. Let us pray. Our God and our Savior, thank you. For yet another beautiful day you've given to us, we worship you, we praise you, we adore you, we magnify your holy name. Thank you for keeping us alive. It is only the living that have this hope that we have now. The dead are gone, and some of those who have died, died in their sins. They have no hope of eternal life. And here we are, having the free gift of life, both in this world and in the world to come. Thank you, Father. Lord, we ask that you speak your word to us. Revival once again. We need revival, Lord. We need revival. More than healing of our bodies. More than the provision of money more than protection of our physical lives we need revival lord revive our spiritual life we look around the church the body of christ and we see we see people continue to go astray and get lost lord revive us if there's any time we need revival, it is now. Help us, Lord. Use me to speak to us. Even me. I need it, Lord. I should have advanced in Christ more than this. Therefore, Lord, speak to each and every one of us. Use me as a vessel. Let your word bring healing to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. So today we are talking about run well. This is a very simple topic, run well. Run well. Running is just moving fast with your feet, as fast as you can. Not walking, not strolling. But running, run well. And this type of run, I'm talking about the run of competition. The race of this life. Running a race to meet our Redeemer. There is a song that says, I am running a race to meet our Redeemer. That is a type of race I'm talking about. Run well. Run well because we are not just running to arrive. But we are running to win. Anybody can run. We see people running on treadmills. They are running to nowhere. But they may have very good pace, very good stride, very energetic, and they are running a race. But unfortunately, they are running in one spot. They are going nowhere. People running every morning. People running, but running to nowhere. They have no destination. They go to one spot and run 100 miles on one particular spot. But they are going nowhere. I don't know how you run in your race. But this race of eternity, we must run well. Run well in this race. May God help us. Let's look at the Bible test for today. First, First Corinthians chapter 9, 24 to 27. Know ye not that they which run in the race run all, but one Receive it the prize. So run 
that he may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we are incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep my body, I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Run well. Looking at the church today, different denominations, different churches. The modern Christianity to some people, as a matter of fact, majority of today's Christians, at least the ones I've seen. It's about the denomination, it's about the rules set by the pastor, and not about the standard of the Bible anymore. This is a time when you post something on social media, you see people who bear Christian names, who claim to be Christians, telling you, don't judge. And they just tell you straight off that everybody has their own conviction. This is your belief. This is not my belief. So you see a lot of division in Christianity today because people play by different sets of rules. So people believe that you can worship in church and not even have your hair covered. Some others believe that so long as you are in the worship place, so long as you prophesy as a woman, so long as you have long hair, so long as you are praying, you have to cover your hair because of the angels. Some believe that you just need to make a confession Confess your faith in Jesus Christ and that's all. And you can go back and continue with your drinking, with your adultery and backbiting and every sort of evil. Today it is about what does our denomination believe? What is it that our pastor preaches? And no longer about what the Bible says. But I tell you the truth, there is only one way to heaven. And if you are on a path, if you are on a path running a race to meet your God and your maker, and the sets of rules, the rules you play by, are different from what is here from the standard of this Bible, I tell you, you are not on the narrow way and you will land in a different destination. For there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Today, a lot of people take Christianity as a religion. A lot of people feel that to be a Christian, you just need to be a nice person. It's just about, it's between you and your God and nothing else. But Christianity is more than that. Listen, Christianity is not a club, it's not a religion. So those of you who feel you have your own sets of rules, you choose what to believe and choose not what to believe. You choose what to obey and choose not what to obey. I tell you the truth, you are on the wrong path and you are going to see yourself in an undesirable location, destination at the end. Look at what Paul said. He said, don't you know that 
when everybody is running in a race, only one person receives the prize. The first position goes to only one person. That is a physical competition. And you must also make sure that you strive according to the rules. If you are running a relay race, you have to be on your lane. If you are running with your legs, you don't need to wear springs. You don't need to wear shoes that have springs. You will be disqualified. You don't need to take any kind of drug that gives you unnecessary energy. You must strive according to the rules. That is an earthly race. A lot of people also believe that in running a heavenly race, you can live your life the way you want. But Paul said, that now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. The people that strive for mastery, the people that run the race of this world, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we are incorruptible. Our crown is such that doesn't corrupt. Verse 20 says, I therefore so run, not as or certainly, I'm not running like someone beat in the air. I am running with a prize in my, on my mind. I have an aim. And the aim is to be told by the Lord, well done, good and faithful servant. Oh, how have we become so deceived that many of us now go to church to please our pastors? How deceived are some of us that some of us who are even pastors, we want to show to people that, oh, we are prayer warriors. Oh, we know how to preach. We are the apostles. We are the good people of God. We want to be accepted by the world, especially this time of social media. Everybody is looking for views. Everybody is looking for followers. So people choose to talk about things that are trendy. Instead of preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Why is it that every Sunday you react to things? Why is it that you talk about things that are trendy? And forget about the times we are living in as Christians. Why are so many of us so carried away? Why is it that you as a believer, you have no fear of God in your heart. But when you see your pastor... You readjust your lifestyle. You see a human being. So who is your God? Is it God Almighty in heaven who sees even your heart? The deepest part of your heart or your past that sees the physical appearance. Who should you fear? We now live in a time that a lot of, peop a lot of people play by the rules of what people see. And not by the rule that is written in the word of God. Why are so many of us so deceived today? But Paul said, So fight I, not as one that beat at the air, but I keep under my body and bring it to the subjection. I bring it into subjection. I beat my body. I discipline myself. Because I have a goal on my mind. And that goal is for my Lord to tell me, well done, good and faithful servant. How deceived are we, especially some of us who are men of God. To pursue financial gains. Instead of us. To seek the approval of the one that called us. 
Someone died recently, a man of God. And I was saying, I was talking to another person who we were discussing about his death. And I was saying, he's gone. He is gone. There's no time anymore. There's no time for him anymore to work. He's gone. And I was telling the pastor that he's gone. But those of us who are going to go there to bury him, we will forget that somebody is next. And I told my, told my fellow pastor that that person that is next could be me. It could be you. But when are we going to learn our lessons? That we are not going to stand in the presence in front of that rich man in our church. Man, you're not going to stand in front of your pastor. We are going to stand in front of this God who has been enduring, who has been patient for thousands of years, believing that we will change and accept the free gift of life. Paul said, But I keep under my body and bring it un into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Where are those who believe in one saved, always saved? Where are those who believe in extreme grace? That you have nothing to do. You just need to believe and after you believe, you can go and start smoking and drinking and live your life the way you want. Paul said, if he doesn't run well, he could be disqualified. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. This is Paul saying this. Scotting the Galatians. He said, you did run well. Before now, you used to run very well. You used to do very good. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persecution comes not of him that calleth you. You used to do well before. But why are you no longer doing well? Let me tell you one thing. If anybody takes a fellow Christian, a, contem a contemporary fellow Christian, this word that you used to believe the truth. Why is it that you no longer believe the truth? Why is it that you no longer run well? They will say, oh, you have assumed the position of a judge. Why are you judging me? Holier than thou, why are you judging me? But to Paul, this is truth. The Bible says, examine yourselves. Men, sister, examine yourselves to see if you are still in the Lord. Are you on the path heading for destruction? Or you are on the path heading for eternal life? A lot of people have been deceived. Majority of Christians have been deceived. And sometimes when I see people post some things, I go to the comment section on social media and I read. I say, let me even see what these people display on social media. And you see people with Christian names. See people professing to be Christians, vomiting things that unbelievers don't even supposed to vomit out of their mouth. And because we have so many false teachers, because we have so many false prophets who are interested in their belly, they don't care, they don't care about your soul, they don't care about where you spend eternity. It's none of their business. They are interested in your money, they are interested in your support, they are interested in you as a number. In their church. They care nothing about you. Where you spend eternity. 
It's a matter of fact, I've seen men of God who will never tell you the truth. They will never tell you the truth because they know that the moment they tell you the truth, you could be offended and you could change church. But the truth is that the church doesn't belong to you. The church is the body of Christ. If God brings some sheep for you to feed them, to pasture them, that doesn't mean the church belongs to you. Nobody owns any church. The church belongs to Jesus Christ. How long are we going to be deceived? Let me tell you, judgment is coming. And for those who run the race to please their pastors, they will never see the face of God smiling. I tell you the truth, the judgment of God is going to be very, very fierce. It's not a threat. I'm just reminding us. Look at what Paul said again in Second Timothy chapter 2. Verses 3 to 5. Thou therefore, so there of Jesus Christ. Thou therefore. Are you a soldier of Jesus Christ? Are you a soldier? Have you been enlisted into the army of God? Have you been enlisted? Are you a soldier of Jesus Christ? Listen, this word is for you. Every Christian is a soldier of the cross. Thou, therefore, endure hardness, endure hardship, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive Lawfully. Soldiers of Christ. Strive lawfully. Run where? Run where? Run where? Don't just run because you see people running. As a matter of fact, when you have crowd in the place and there is a stampede, you see people running. People who don't even know why others are running. You see people running. And you see people stepping, falling, and being stepped over. And you see some people losing their lives. People running. Don't just run. Strive for masteries. And when you strive, when you run the race of this life, please run according to the law. Strive. According to rules. Don't just go to church, men, women. Don't just go to church. Go to church and keep the laws of God. Don't just be in church. Strive lawfully. Sometimes you see some people during competition doing very well, becoming first. But when the judge comes, he says, well, as a matter of fact, you did this, you did this. Let's watch the cameras. Let's watch the videos. You are disqualified. That is how it is. There are rules guiding this kingdom. Even in your giving, Jesus Christ talks about giving. That when you give, do not give. Do not give your arms. Don't. Give your arms in the presence of everybody if you want to get rewards from your Father in heaven. When you do your arms, do not do them to receive praises from men. If not, you have no reward in heaven. When you pray, do not pray in the presence. By the street corners, do not bring out your religious life before people. To show to people that, oh, you are a very holy person. No. He said, open your doors, go into your room, lock your room, and guest yourself. 
Pray to your Father in heaven. And when you even pray, not by babbling, not by repetitions, there are rules. James said, the epistle of James, you, you ask and you don't receive because you ask amiss. You ask wrongly with bad motives to spend what you have not received, what you are asking for, in order to spend it on your own lust. That is why you have not received. So there are rules. How many of us are really interested in entering heaven? Isn't it very clear that majority of people today go to church for protection and not because they want to make heaven? And that's why you see prophetic ministries filled, filled up to capacity and you see ministries where they speak the truth. You see, members are very few. Because people are looking for power. People want to know who the witch that is troubling them. People want to know who the witch is. People want to know tomorrow. I remember a woman, one of my daughters who was schooling abroad, wanted to come home finally after her graduation. And I was talking with her and she said, Oh, when I arrive in Nigeria, I'm going to stay in that state. And I said, what are you doing there? She said, my mom said, there is a prophet. I need to see there. And I asked her, do you have any problem? She said, no. So why do you need that prophet? Why? Oh, do you want to go and meet a prophet and tell the prophet that, Oh, man of God, as a matter of fact, I have a lot of peace. My peace is too much. Why do you need to go to the prophet? You have no problem. You just graduated. You are just a young, young girl. You are doing well. Why do you want to go and consult the prophet? In this world. And I told her, those who run after prophets, we always have problems in their lives. They will always have problems. And not just problems, but they will always have enough problems in their lives. Because, listen, there is a process. This is a kingdom. Christianity is a kingdom. You are in a kingdom and there are rules. And you have to live by the rules. You can't abandon your personal relationship with Christ. And you run after people who will connect you to Christ. It doesn't work like that. You have to have a personal relationship with Christ. Have your own prayer life. I told the mom. I called the mom and I told the mom. Why? Why don't you ask this girl to grow her spiritual life? Instead of re relying on prophets. Instead of patronizing prophets at this age. May this girl read the Bible. Pray. Fast. Attend services. Bible studies. This is how to raise children. Not train children to patronize prophets. I don't like people who patronize prophets. Prophets have their place in the church. They have their own rules, their own, their own roles in the church. They are important. But prophets are not everything. Prophets cannot take the place of your personal relationship with God. But this is what a lot of people are doing. A lot of people who have no personal relationship with God, they have very good relationship with a list of prophets. You are lost. You are lost. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you are not a child of God, if you have no Spirit of God in you, if you are not led by the Spirit of God, if you like, have relationship with other prophets in the world, you will never make it to heaven. Let's move on. This is the description of the end times, the times we are living in right now. And I want us to read the scripture. 
Second Timothy chapter 3, 1 verses 1 to 7. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful and holy, without natural affections, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness. They have a form of Christianity. They have a form of godliness. But they deny the power thereof. They have a form of godliness. They like to attend services. But deny the power thereof. They deny the power of the word. They deny the power of holiness. They deny the power of righteousness. They deny the power of the fruit of the spirit. They deny the power of a holy living. They have a form of godliness. From such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead Captive, silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse laws. This is it. People who are laden with sins, they don't want to have a personal relationship with God. And they believe that if they, even though they don't have a personal relationship with God, even though they are not born again, they believe that if they can connect themselves to a prophet, to a powerful man of God, powerful in quotes, they will make it and they will be accepted by God. I remember one day in the seminary, a man of God was giving only communion. And he said, even if you are a witch, come, come, you are saved. Even if you are a witch, even if you are a wizard, come, come receive this communion. <laughs> uh, you know why I'm laughing? <laughs> He said it as if he is the keeper of the gates of heaven. <laughs> These people give you false hope. They tell you sweet things. Even if you're on your bed dying, they will prophesy to you and tell you, God loves you, so seed. And then you so seed. It doesn't work like that. God is the God of order. If you don't love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with everything you have, the kingdom is not for you. Beware of those who are not interested in your soul, in the salvation of your soul. People who have no interest in the salvation of your soul, but they are interested in your pocket. They are interested in your bank account. Look at verse 6. 2 Timothy 3, 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead, and lead captive silly women, laden with sins. Look at the level of worldliness among our women and our men today. Mostly women. Look at the level. Look at the Heavy eyelashes they wear. Look at the sensual clothes they put on. Let me tell you the truth. For every one you see appearing like a sinner on the street, there is a strong prophet behind them who gives them sweet prophecies. Who tell them that nothing is going to happen to you so long as you give your tithes, so long as you pay, give offering every Sunday, so long as you are a partner of this ministry, you are on your way to heaven. So you see, even those who are prostitutes, they are titers, faithful titers in many of these churches, and they don't talk to them. A member giving you money. You know this person. 
does not have genuine money. I remember I saw one of these young boys uh, I used to support in church. And then he saw me in a vehicle and he offered to pay. And I said, no, what do you do for a living? The way he was dressed, I was not trying to judge him by his appearance, but I know that many of our youths don't want to work. This year we organized free training through my charity organization, Nozana David Foundation. Free training for video editing, for videography, um, web design, coding, uh, graphics, computer appreciation, uh, different things. Free of charge. How many people applied? How many people applied? Total number of people. Not more than 10. Only three people graduated. Three. Three. Out of all these courses. Only three people graduated. Only three. This is a problem. This is the problem in our society today. Lots of people don't want to work. They want to steal. And when they come to church, most men of God don't care where your money is coming from. Because they need the money. They don't care. I remember some time ago, a lady emailed me. And she said, she listened to my video. And she's led to support my ministry. And she requested for my account details. But I told her, I can't give it to you. Why? Because she said, I know I'm not saved, but I am led to support your ministry. If she was a Muslim, that would have been a different case. This is a Christian. If she had been a pagan, that would have been, I would have maybe given it a different Reaction, response. I felt so bad in my spirit. A Christian who said, I know I am not saved, but I want to give. And I said, I am not going to give you my ministry account details. God is more interested in your soul than in your money. My conscience will trouble me if I hand over details to her. If she had given without contacting me, no problem. If she had said, I need your account details, I want to support, no problem. But for you to tell me that you were not saved, you are not even bothered. You want to give money. And you know you are not saved. I said, I'm interested in your soul. If I need money, I won't be in ministry. I'm a multi-talented human being. Uh, there are lots of things I could do for money. There's no money in speaking the truth. She never responded back. But I don't need that kind of money. God is more interested in her soul than in the money. Run well. Brother, run well. Sister, run well. Run well. Why? Because, listen to what 2 Corinthians 5, verses 9 and 10 says. Look at what they say. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Our labor is for acceptance. Not by human beings. Not by church members. Not by the society. Not by, not by followers online. Not by fans. This is a time that men of God are interested in fans. <laughs> oh. 
Discipleship is dying. Discipleship. Instead of raising disciples, many people are interested in raising fans. <laughs> May God help us. Let's continue. Whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. A time is coming when we shall receive our reward of the things we have done in the body. I don't know how you will live in your life. Are you saved? Are you saved? That is the prayer I was praying today. That God, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't. That place is not meant for me. I don't want to go to hell. Are you ready to make the kingdom? The church is the ark of Noah. Are you inside or you are outside? It's about raining. The storm is about coming. The clouds are about to break loose. And if you are not in this ark, or if you are in another ark, it's going to be very, very terrible. I'm not here to judge you, but I'm here to let you know that don't just run, but run well. Run well. Run well. Don't just be a Christian. Don't just be a giver of offerings. But run well. Serve God in an acceptable way. Don't serve God because you see other people serving. Don't serve God because you see other people serving Him. But serve God. Because you have the hope of eternal life. I had someone some years ago told me that if not for husband, if not for the husband I'm looking for, why will I go to church? So her primary reason for going to church is because she's looking for a husband. Not heaven. Not to be changed. Not to be fed by the word of God, but because of our husband. Pastors, this is a reality of some of our members. They are not interested in God. Some of them are coming to church because of you. And if you don't lead them to Christ, it's going to be very, very terrible. Let us pray. Oh Lord, thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, wake us up. Many of us are sleeping. Wake us up. Wake us up, oh Lord. Wake us up. We need to wake up. Wake us up, Lord. Wake us up. Father, please wake us up. Time is running out. Wake us up, O oh Lord. Wake us, your children, up. Help us to be truthful to you. Truthful to the call. Help us to stand strong. Help us to be sincere before you. And not as deceivers. Not bringing our spirituality before men. But before you, we are nothing. No! Let it be a thing of the heart. Let it light of Christ shine from within us. Lord, please help us. I pray for your children, Lord, including myself. In any way we are getting it wrong. Help us. Help us, Father. Help us, Savior. 
Help us, Almighty God. Help us, Almighty King. Thank you for your love and your care. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. I pray for us many who are rededicating their lives to you. Lord, accept them. Help them. It is not of him that will it. Not of him that run it. It's of you that you had mercy. We hope to run well. Show us your mercy, Lord. We hope to please you. Show us your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. Pray for us many that are members of this ministry, that, Lord, you will support them, protect them, provide for them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, support your children, O Lord. Deliver your people, O God. Set your people free by the power of your Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And our Lord will pray that you support those who have been supporting this ministry financially, through prayers, moral support, sharing our videos. Lord, support them. May you never lack. Most especially, may the Lord guide you all the days of your lives until you are welcome into the kingdom. Of his dear son Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please share this video, and in case you have not subscribed, we encourage you to subscribe to this channel. The Narrow is Christ for all nations. Uh, please subscribe and also invite other people to subscribe and follow us on Facebook too. Thank you and God bless you. For those of you who want to support us, our account details are on our website and also on the screen. If you are in the U.S. and you would like to support us, our account details are on the screen. We have a U.S. bank account right now, so you can easily give your offering through there. We need your support. Please support us so that we can run our ministry and also uh, finance our charity organization where we help the poor and out of school children get back to school. Thank you and God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.